Hello, everybody. This is Narada Rishi Raja with ExpeditiousFool.com, where we remove our obstacles each and every day by focusing on that DMP, the daily mindfulness practice. All right. Now I have some advice from the Gita, so let's go ahead and get into it today and see what Krishna has to say. All right. My lighting's a little weird here, so I have to back up. We've got... Uh, if I can get it in focus here. Again, told you the lighting's weird. Give me one second. There we go. Material elements. So this is chapter 7, verse 4. My material nature is made up of eight separate energies. Earth, water, fire, air, ether, mind, intelligence, and false ego. So this is what creates us. <laughs> Um, so we have the earth, water, fire, air, ether, mind, um, intelligence, false ego. Those, those are the things. The earth, water, fire, air, ether, those most people are familiar with. Those are the five elements, right? Then we see mind. You think, well, mind, is that the same thing as intelligence? No, it's not. Mind is a mind process. Mind helps us learn things. Mind helps us develop, right? Then there's intelligence, which is actually outside of the body, but it helps create this material existence. And that intelligence also, we have, with that intelligence, we have a false ego. The false ego is the thing that holds your form together. That's why it's the primitive brain, that limbic system, that, that initial response brain, right? That's the false ego. That false ego is based off of fear. Fear is based off of, all fear is based off of the root cause that you think you're temporary, right? But if you notice in this, it says material nature is made up of my material, my material nature is made up of eight separate energies. My material nature, which means there is another nature. There is another person and another personhood, another being, another it, whatever it might be, right? But there is another thing. It's just not material, right? The false ego makes us think that the material is real, so we put over-importance to it. This is what gets us stuck in those traumatic cycles, using that word, right? Those, those stressed out, sad cycles that spin and spin and spin where we feel like there's no hope. It's because when we lose understanding that we are more than just these eight elements, right? We are a whole nother thing. This is just one portion of our existence, right? That's what, that's what Krishna is getting across here in this. He's showing us that, yes, in the material, these are the elements that one is made of. However, that's just one aspect of life. That's it. So that's the advice that we have for you today. Chapter 7, verse 4. Um, I hope that you enjoy each and every one of these. I hope it brings you closer to understanding of God's source and not just my understanding of God's source, however you feel it. Yes, I use Krishna to explain or I use Shiva or I use Ram or, or Pavarti or Sati or, you know, I use these different things. They're all different aspects of God as we all are different aspects of God. So whatever aspect that you relate is the highest, that's completely fine by me. But I hope that with some of my teachings, as you listen, if, if you are receptive, you can, you can develop your relationship, whatever that might be, closer. There is a process to develop your relationship closer. There are techniques that are as good as scientifically proven, and some of them absolutely scientifically proven, that will lead you closer to whatever it is you feel God's source is. Those te techniques are rooted in yoga. That's why yoga. All right, everybody. Have a great day on purpose and stay mindful. Namaskaram.